coming. We have, we have something pretty interesting to show you. We're going to attempt to make the world's largest ambrotype here. And um, last night we didn't have time to test it, so we put the lights there and we have an idea of what we want to do. But imagine that you were going into a shoot and you never even tested to see what the light is. So it should be interesting. But um, I'm very excited to be here and I want to thank everyone that, that got us here. There's hundreds of people behind the scenes working and people all the way up from the top. I want to thank Simon Newton and, and Sala and Your Excellency for, for bringing us here. And um, after, we, after we show our film, I'd like to invite you, I would like to show you some of how the camera works, if that's okay with you. Okay, so this, this project for me, it, it, started, it started in a very strange way that I was already working as a commercial photographer and I had plenty of jobs and I was doing fine, but I, I wanted to go back and, and shoot film. And when I went back to, to find the film that, that I loved, I loved the type, the Polaroid Type 55 film. And I realized it was gone, and then I started realizing all these other things were disappearing slowly. And it, it really made me panic because I, I felt like in the, me, the medium that I wanted to work in was going to be vanished. It was, it was disappearing off the face of this earth. And um, I did a bunch of research, and I found a 19th century process called wet plate collodion. And it's a really neat process where you make your own film, you make the developer, you make each step of it from an, uh, it's an 1850s manuscript. So we have 1850s recipes and we're making film and all the pieces from that. And I figured that if all these companies, if Kodak went out of business, Fuji went out of business, if everything went out of business, if I learned how to make this film, I would always be able to photograph and make pictures the way that I wanted to. And it was interesting because, well, I'll backtrack a little, but I was working primarily in digital for my clients and everything, and my hand was being forced to retouch things. And it, be, it, was, it was almost insulting that I was looking at nature, and I'm looking at the world, and, and, and it's, it's not good enough. We got to make it better. We got to make it brighter. We got to make this. Take this power line out of this shop. Move this. And... And that really bothered me, and it really bothered me on the portraits in people's faces. And to, to alter someone's face to me is, is insanity. It, I don't, and it's, it's not because of just, just in photographic ways, it's in the ways of our culture and our society that, that we are being, it seems like we're being pressured in to make ourselves better and better, and we got to look better, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm making pictures and they're going out in campaigns and 15-year-old kids are reading this and they're seeing this and it's a lie. And I'm contributing to that. And I, I, mean, I have nothing against anyone that, that is working in that way. But for me personally, I did not want to be remembered for that. So once I made my first plate, I finally made one. And you make them, the, the film to me is the most beautiful film in the world. And, and you actually use silver in the process. And I held this actual object in my hand. It was only about 8 by 10 inches, which is really big in the wet plate world. But I held this object in my hand, and I, I fell so deeply in love with this, this thing, that I quit all my jobs. And I, I had this idea, and I was looking out of this giant window that I had, and I said, I want to make one of these like that. So that's how I ended up here. You know, it's been a pretty wild journey since. So the next thing, I think before we, we try to make a picture, we want to we show a film that Lauren Vance made. And she's the uh, producer and director of our Silver and Light films. And I want to introduce Will as my right-hand man. <laughs> so. 